Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the stage as we welcome Dr. Sean Bergman. Good morning. I am excited to be here this morning. I'm excited because I get to talk to you about big data, analytics, and innovation. Now, how many of you have heard of the term big data? Oh, and good, we have a little bit of audience participation. This is better than my MBA class, good. How many of you have heard of the term, uh, the term analytics? Now, how many of you know what in the heck those terms actually mean? I speak quite a bit on data, analytics, and research, and I ask those questions. And I get the same kind of responses. Most people have heard about data and analytics, but they're not exactly sure what those terms mean. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to clarify what big data and analytics mean, and I'm going to talk to you about how people can work together with analytics to create insight and provide innovative solutions to problems that we are facing. But first what I want to do is I want to show you the current state of analytics in occupational safety. So here's a graph. And this graph represents the four injury categories we have across all industries after you have about a million labor hours of work. And you can see on the far right hand side, most people are safe, about 66%. They don't have any injuries, that's a good thing. That's what we want. As you move a little bit closer to the right, about quarter, 25%, those people have what we call minor injuries. Minor injuries are little cuts, bruises, that'll cause you a little bit of discomfort, but don't, you don't miss any time away from work. As we continue to slide left on that graph, about 8% of the workforce, that's where we have lost time injuries. And those injuries are a little more severe. It causes people to be away from their jobs for a, a period of time. And finally, on the far left, we have what we call process injuries. And these are where people really get hurt, maybe even killed. Thank goodness it's a very low base rate, but it's still something we got to get our heads wrapped around. And I'm going to submit to you that analytics can help us understand what's going on. Currently, this is what we know, what we don't know. We don't know what takes people from being safe at the job to having a minor injury. We don't know what people, takes people from having a minor injury to a lost time injury. And we really don't have much of an ability to predict the how, why, when, where these catastrophic events happen at work. Analytics can provide insight, that insight can provide innovative solutions, and those solutions can keep people safe at work. Before we get into that, let's just back up a quick second. Let's make sure we're all on the same page. Let's make sure we're all talking the same language. I'm going to define and clarify what big data and analytics mean. I'm going to talk about how people and analytics can work together to come up with innovative solutions. And finally, I want to make you think again about what you know about analytics. Because I know you're sitting there thinking, dude, I'm not a numbers person. This analytics thing ain't for me. I'm going to submit to you there is a role for everybody in analytics. Well, let's start with big data. Now, of course, in academics, we can't agree on anything. There is not an agreement on what is the real definition of analytics. But generally, people think there are three elements to it. Volume, velocity, variety. Volume, as a lot of data, a lot of information pouring in. Velocity, that information just keeps coming. Variety, your data has different flavors, different structures, different types of information. Okay, well that's the academic terms. Conceptually, eh, a little hard to get our head wrapped around. So let's use uh, what I'm sure you're gonna be hashtagging after uh, this Idea Academy. Let's talk about Twitter. Let's use Twitter to illustrate some of those uh, concepts. Volume, lots of information. In the United States alone, we produce about 75 billion tweets a year. And you know, those tweets don't all come in at the exact same time, there's some velocity. They come into the tune of about 2,400 tweets per second. And if you've been on Twitter, you know that they're, all the posts are not exactly the same. You've got your text updates, you've got your picture posts, you have your obligatory cat video, and of course you have hashtags. So you have all of this information. Keeps coming in, got lots of different varieties of information. 
What the heck do you do with this stuff? Analytics to the rescue. Analytics is a process. It's a process where we take the information we have, we generate insight, and that helps us make decisions. I like to think about it as it helps us separate out the signal and the noise. You've got all this information coming in, and you don't need all of it to make every single decision. Analytics helps us kind of highlight some of the information we need to pay attention to right now with some of the information we can pay maybe less attention to. Let's go back to our Twitter example. We've got all of this Twitter information coming in. Now, we already know we got variety, so not all of the tweets are exactly the same. So maybe we can do some theme extraction. Let's only look at those tweets that have to do with what else? Analytics. And then let's uh, search some hashtags. Let's only find those people that are hashtagging Idea Academy. We're going to do some sentiment analysis, and we only want to keep those tweets with people who are really geeked and excited about data. Finally, let's do some content analysis. Let's figure out a little bit more about those folks. And what we're left with is insight. Insight that's going to help us make better decisions. Now, people are natural signal detection machines. We try to find information or find patterns in every piece of information that we get. But sometimes, when we're inundated with a lot of information, we get a little confused. We twist up the signal and the noise. Now, my training is an industrial organizational psychologist. And because of that, I know a little bit about cognitive science and decision science. And I could inundate you with study after study after study after study after study after study after study, where pigeons and rats have been shown to be better at complex decision making than humans. I am not going to bore you with all those details. Instead, I'm going to give a scenario to you that I think is going to be a little more accessible, especially if you're a sports fan. If you have watched a lot of sports, you've collected a lot of information, you have reached one conclusion. And that conclusion is this. And you know this is true, especially if your team is the underdog. I did my graduate work at University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Go Vols. And every stinking time we play Alabama, I know they get all the calls. In my gut, I know this is accurate. What does the data say? When we look at the data, we actually find out, no, top-rate teams actually don't get favored by the refs. It's actually the underdogs that there might be a little bias for, but only when they play in certain conferences. So your signal detection machine could be accurate if you always root for the underdogs, but only when they play in certain conferences. That's why I like research. That's why I like data. That's why I like analytics. These counterintuitive findings that make me think again about what I know about the world. People, we're limited in our ability to process information. It's no fault of our own. We can only see this much of the world. We know there's this much out there, but we can only see this much of the world. Analytics, data, when you collect and do it the right way, it opens up the possibilities. It gives you more information in order to make good decisions, come up with innovative solutions. So let's go back and let's visit our current stat, uh, status of occupational safety. Our goal, our objective is to take all the people on the left side and we want to move them over to the right. We want to keep them safe. The good news about occupational safety is we have a lot of data. We've got a lot of information. Unfortunately, we're not maximizing its use to keep people safe on the job. Imagine if we could take this information and we could put it in an analytic model. We could generate a predictive algorithm. And that predictive algorithm could be created a safety index. We could embed that safety index into a dashboard. And this dashboard will allow us to predict when, where, how, what types of injuries people will have. And that information could be used to create in, um, safety interventions. And those interventions can ultimately help keep people safe. Now that's innovative thinking. That's what analytics can do. And it can do it not just in occupational safety. We have a lot of really important, really complex problems that are out there. A combination of people and analytics can derive insight and that insight can lead us to innovative solutions. For example, we're using analytics to understand and stop beehive collapse. We're looking at education and doing research to figure out how to get kids in and through college. 
We're studying the workforce. We're using analytics to figure out skills gaps and develop training to get people back to work. We're looking at energy consumption. We're using data and analytics to build smarter grids, build a sustainable planet. In healthcare, we're looking at the best treatments for childhood cystic fibrosis. And ladies and gentlemen, these are just the projects in which I am involved. There's a bunch of other projects out there where data and analytics can help create that insight, get you those innovative solutions. You're probably sitting there saying, Sean, that sounds pretty good. Still, I'm, dude, I'm not, a, I'm not a data person. That, that, I'm not sure this thing is for me. Well, I would submit to you that you need to think again about what you know about analytics. There's a role for everybody. Analytics is more than just numbers. As I think about it, there are five components to analytics. Technology, mathematics, methodology, people, and business. The technology, that's largely what is generating the big data. The databases, computer code, that's what helps us manage and process all of this information. The mathematics, those are the algorithms. You put the information in, the algorithms process it, you get insight out. Methodology. You have to think about the end at the beginning. I teach an entire course on the analytics methodology, and I can tell you, you have to do things the right way in order to maximize your analytic effort. That fourth component, it's people. People are the ones that manage and use the technology. People are the ones that interpret the output from those algorithms. People are the ones that implement the methodology. Heck, people run the businesses. Not every business can use every single analytic solution. You need to think about the business needs when you're analyzing your data. So when you think about it that way, people are absolutely integral to analytics. If any one of these components falters, this whole enterprise falls apart. So people have to be solid and well implanted in this analytics process. Well, that makes sense. People generate the data. People process the data. People use the data. And when I keep saying people, I don't just mean data geeks like me. I mean everybody. We are looking at really complicated problems. We need people from all different backgrounds, all different perspectives to look at these issues and give us those solutions. As I think about it, there's definitely a role for you in the analytics process. People are all over this analytics machine that we have. People are the ones that are in your organizations that are helping you get accurate data. If you get bad or dirty data, there's not a whole lot we can do to fix that analytically. You need to have good data to provide the right insight to make decisions. Going back to the methodology, analytics is a process. It's counterintuitive. You've got to think of the end at the beginning. It's people that make sure we ask the right questions, collect the right data, process it in the right way, and make sure we get the right solutions. And analytics does not happen in a vacuum. It takes a team. It takes a team of a lot of different folks, a lot of different people from a lot of different perspectives, to make sure we're looking at this really complicated thing from all different angles and asking the right questions, getting the right answers, putting the right solutions in place. There is definitely an art to this science. It takes talent to go from an analytic result to a human solution. It takes skill to go from innovation to application. I'll be honest with you, that is uh, something that us data people, we don't really have. It takes a lot of different folks to make this thing go. And finally, it takes people to provide the innovative solutions. The analytics and technology, they'll give you the insight but it's people that come up with the innovative solutions and the thoughts. So during my brief time with you this morning, I hope I've taught you a little bit about what big data and analytics mean. I hope I've convinced you that people and analytics can work together in order to come up with innovative solutions and insight. I hope I've caused you to think again about analytics and the role that you can play in it. Because as I see it, the only thing missing in this equation is you. Thank you for letting me borrow a few moments of your time this morning.